Hey folks, this is Abel James and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man where we help you look, feel and perform at your best. Do you ever wonder what modern processed food is doing to kids? While childhood obesity and type 2 diabetes are running rampant, the answer to that question is usually a bummer. But you're about to hear from a remarkable nine-year-old who I met at a book signing last spring who made me feel a heck of a lot better, and I think he'll make you feel better too. And God knows we all need it these days. But this fourth grader not only read all the way through my book, The Wild Diet, and who has time to read these days, but he also shared a story that I will not forget. And I'm not a parent yet, but I do know how unexciting vegetables can be, especially when you're in fourth grade. But what if you found out, just to go back there in your own mindset, because there's a lot to learn here, what if you found out that eating clean made you better at sports and school? So listen on, a few months ago, Jack's mom, Deb, wrote in and she said, Dear Fat Burning Friends, Last spring, my son and I met Abel and Allison at a book signing at Penn State Hazleton. My son, Jack, used the wild diet to drop weight for wrestling. Though he made the states, he did not medal. When Abel signed his book, he wrote, next year you will get that medal. And so he did. And then she attached photos. If you're watching the video version, you can see him. Uh, and if you're not, you can always check out the, uh, the photos and the videos at fatburningman.com. Okay, she goes on and says, he was the youngest at age nine to place in the nine and 10 year old bracket. He even wrestled a boy that just turned 11 Although he placed 8th, we are looking forward to him wrestling at age 10 in the same bracket next year. He's a young boy and does not always eat wild, but every time it's not processed, I consider it a win. And we always come back to basics, especially breakfast. P.S. He also is the youngest boy and has the highest grade in his class. I swear it's because I've never bought him box food or cereal. Ha <laughs> ha, a true believer, Deb. Well, thank you so much for writing in back then, Deb. I know I've thanked you offline, but I wanna thank you publicly as well. And uh, believe it or not, I convinced Jack and Jack's mom to uh, come on Fat Burning Men for this special episode here today. And this nine-year-old is wise well beyond his years. I'm telling you, aside from being obviously adorable, there is a lot to learn from Jack and kids like him. So if you want to share your adorable story, please get in touch at fatburningman.com. You can also find me on social media uh, under my name, Abel James, or you can head on to iTunes if you'd like to check out the podcast, subscribe, and leave a review. Uh, that applies to YouTube as well and wherever else you might be watching or listening to this episode. Now, if you'd like to try The Wild Diet yourself, from the device you're listening on right now. Check this out. Our new wild fat loss program has the best meal plans we've ever put together and they're seasonal based upon our favorite recipes that are all backed by the principles of the wild diet to help you shed fat while enjoying satisfying meals and real food treats. As you guys know, if you've been listening for a while, we love comfort foods. I'm a big pie fan. We love cookies. We just made some muffins last night. And uh, the way that we do it is always with clean foods. And so even if you're eating something that should be horrible for you, we find a way to uh, put some good, clean foods in there as well. So you can have your nutrition and get your treats in too. And trust me, that's the only way that I would have it. There are no ridiculous workouts. So if you're ready to start shedding stubborn fat while eating delicious food, get our 30-day program for a limited time discount at fatburningman.com slash 30 days. That's the number 30 D-A-Y-S. Just type that in from any device, fatburningman.com slash 30 days. Or if you just want to dip your toes into this wild lifestyle and get some free goodies, you can also just go to fatburningman.com and sign up for the newsletter and I'll send it right to your inbox. Just as a reminder, if you'd like to listen with your family to past episodes, we've done our very best to make them all clean. You can get all 200 plus episodes for free at fatburningman.com. And then my new album of music, Swamp Thing, in case you haven't heard that yet, that may contain a few slightly suspect words, but I hear that kids love that too. Great road trip and tunes if you're doing that this time of year. You can always find uh, my music at abeljames.com. That's A-B-E-L, James. 
Com. In the spirit of a family-friendly show, on to this one with Jack, where you're about to learn the surprising snacks wild kids pack for lunch, how playing sports makes us smarter, the hardest part about eating wild when you're in fourth grade, how to trick adults and kids alike into eating clean, and much more. Let's go hang out with Jack. All right, folks, Jack is nine years old and in fourth grade from Muncie, Pennsylvania. He is a linebacker in football and a little league baseball catcher. He began wrestling at the age of five, but this year Jack placed at Eastern Nationals and he became all state in wrestling. He is an avid outdoorsman, including deer hunting and fishing. His interests include science, math, and civil war history, and I hear he's even at the top of his class. So Jack, thank you so much for coming on the show. In back of you, it's pretty cool because you have a whole lot of trophies there. And uh, I know that when I met you just a year ago, you were kind of coming up trying to get a handle of uh, diet and nutrition and all that. So can you tell us uh, why you were originally interested in eating better? I was interested in eating better because last year I was around 83. So and I either had to wrestle 90 or 75. Okay. And there were a lot of good kids at 90, so I had to drop, like, almost, I dropped nine pounds just to get down. Wow. And how did you do that? Um, I mostly cut out sweets, added more vegetables, and nice. made a little more meat. Yeah. Well, uh, did any of your friends make fun of you for eating vegetables in public or in front of them? <laughs> no, they just wondered why I was eating that. Oh, that's cool. I, I bet they liked it when you started doing really well in wrestling, though, huh? Yeah. Did you Were you surprised when you started, you know, cutting out the candy and the sweets and that sort of thing? Were you surprised by how your body changed or how you felt? Yeah, I cut like one, two pounds before, but nothing like that. And I felt like I faster, hmm. strong, most. Mm -hmm. What about how much you were eating? Did that change? Like, did you notice that you were hungry more or less or anything like that? I wasn't really hungry at all. I, because usually I eat a meat, um, some vegetables, and I usually have a couple like spelt muffins. Yeah, right on. Spelt muffins are good, man. Yeah. You need some uh, clean burning carbs when you're out there shredding on the wrestling mat. But you also play some other sports, don't you? Yeah, like in baseball, I have to get speed to like run around the bases, get yeah. strength, be able to hit the ball. Mm -hmm. Football, you have to be quick to be able to make a tackle or get blocked, and you have to also be strong to be able to make contact as harder than the other person pushing into you. Yeah, and you probably already know this, but one of the coolest things is that once you, uh, if you're leaning down for competition, uh, whether it's wrestling or crew or anything or bike racing or marathoning, like when you met me, I was probably a year ago at, at Penn State when I was signing my books and you came to my talk, which was so cool to meet you. I think I probably weighed around 175. And so I had a fair bit of muscle, but still pretty low body fat. Uh, but when I was doing marathons, so when I was running like long distances, I was at 148 pounds. So I was like a lot smaller. And if you look at pictures of me, I look like a character from Sesame Street. My face is all like smushed up and, and skinny looking. Uh, but it's amazing what your body can do and what you want, uh, depending on what type of competition you're in, is uh, a good power to weight ratio, which means that you don't want fat on your body. You want some, but you don't want more than the amount that you need, which is, uh, you know, not all that much, certainly less than, than most people have right now. So when you uh, start eating right, you cut out those sweets and the junk food and the other nonsense. You start eating your vegetables and the meats and the healthy fats, like you said, and then getting rid of the gluten stuff like that, having the spelt muffins or some rice or some oats or sweet potatoes or, uh, you know, regular potatoes. As long as it's not fried, if you're getting that real food, all of a sudden you see your weight go down a bit, which means you're losing fat. And then you see your power to weight ratio go up, which means you're smaller, but you're stronger. So you can actually wrestle like you know at a lower weight class, but be stronger than other people because you have more muscle there because more of your body is made up of muscle, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, 
reading the wild diet because I think you were one of actually when I met you I think you were the youngest kid who came up to me to uh, get your book signed but a lot of a lot of kids don't really read these days so why did you decide to uh, read my book well I decided because well there's a lot of people over there overweight just because they're eating like you were eating low low fat right so maybe I should like get because I was, had to lose weight that time. Mm-hmm. Did you read the whole way through, or did you skip to some of the recipes? Did you try to make any? Yeah, we made the carrot cake, which is my favorite. <laughs> we made the, oh, we also made the apple pie. Nice. I I want to make the apple cider donut or what? Apple, yeah. apple cider donuts. <laughs> apple cider donuts. Those are my favorite during the holidays. In the fall, when that apple cider is. You know, just ready. You know that in Pennsylvania. The fall is the best for apples. Yeah, we even grow our own apples, and my my grandmother makes homemade applesauce out of it. Oh, man, my grandma did the same thing. That's so great. I, I'd like to ask you this, Jack, if I could. When people ask you, or when I ask you, what is the wild diet? What, what do you say? I usually say, like, it's a higher fat... Um, you take in more fat, not trans fat, or so you eat more vegetables. Mm-hmm. Keep take out the starches mm-hmm. and eat eat a little bit more meat. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it, especially when you're growing. So it doesn't have to be too complicated or anything like that. But especially if you're being uh, active and you're in athletics, you're wrestling like you are. You want to make sure that you're getting basically the the components that you need, the building blocks, uh, to make sure that you're recovering and building muscle. And uh, you want to eat meat, veggies, and fat. And it doesn't have to be too complicated, right? You want to keep clear the stuff that's in packages and you know is really sweet like at the most of us know what's good for us and what's bad for us right but what do you do when you're uh eating out at a restaurant or when you're at school for school lunch well i pa- usually pack my own lunches cool and it's hard to stay away from all those stuff at um like i usually go to hosses or stuff like mm-hmm. that Mm-hmm. So I usually try to get like uh, maybe some salads, but sometimes I get stuff I shouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah, of course. We all do sometimes. And I'll tell you what, Jack, you can get away with it for a little while because you're a lot younger than me and a lot of the people who are listening and watching this video. <laughs> so you can have some fun with it. But it's important to remember that when you eat food, it's fuel. Right, it's it's fuel for your activity, for your athletics, for your wrestling match, and if you put the wrong fuel in, then you're gonna feel worse. Your performance is gonna suffer, right? If you put the wrong fuel into your car, you put dirty fuel in there, you just pour some some water or sugar water into the gas tank or something like that, it'll gunk everything up. You're not gonna be perform. You're not gonna be firing on all cylinders and doing your best. So, what are some of the other? Did you learn anything? else from reading the wild diet that surprised you well i learned that i'm um, like when you put your list of um like the primary foods and secondary foods mm-hmm. i was i was surprised what was on there like i ate a lot of things on the secondary food foods but i sometimes eat like bacon grapefruits raspberries oranges yeah. and also like i i on the like on the primary list i like to eat crab and salmon that's great i also eat lettuce on there and and also i learned that not all foods you read aren't good for you Mm -hmm. like they say it's this is gonna be good for you it's not necessarily plus all the i learned that there was this gmo corn that killed bugs Mm -hmm. but they actually you have bugs in your stomach so that kills your stomach bugs yeah well, because the food that we eat isn't just, you know, if you eat lettuce, like you said, it's not just the lettuce that you're getting. You're also getting, as gross as this sounds, all the little bugs that you can't see that are living on that lettuce. And you're getting the fiber in that lettuce and the water. And what it was grown in matters. You know, if, if the soil is poor quality and a bunch of chemicals uh, and it's been abused with toxins and pesticides, and some of that is showing up 
in that lettuce. So if you go to a fast food restaurant or something like that and there's lettuce in your burger, that's what you're getting. And it also doesn't really have that much nutrition in it. Uh, but when you get something, my brother, is a, my younger brother is an organic farmer up there in New York, not too far from where you are. And if you get uh, lettuce from his farm, then number one, it's going to be an old school heirloom lettuce, right? That our grandmothers would have been growing back in the day in their in their victory gardens, in their gardens behind their houses, right? But on those uh, vegetables, sometimes you know, like on carrots, you see that part that looks dirty on the outside that, like, you feel like you just can't rub it off, right? Yeah. That part is full of those good little bucks that you actually want. And so it's part of the dirt, you're eating a whole ecosystem. And inside your body, it's an ecosystem too. So if you're eating a bunch of poisons that are designed to destroy parts of the ecosystem, then that happens inside your body too when you eat it. So eating that, uh, that fresh vegetable or those fresh apples from behind your house is so much better than going to the convenience store or, or Walmart or something like that and getting one of those apples because you know what, Jack? It might be about 12 months old by the time you get an apple from a store. Did you read that part of the book? Uh, yeah. You want farmer's market food that's just picked or so, stuff like that, like fresh corn yeah. or like fresh stuff. What, what are your favorite foods to eat? What do you eat like most weeks? Well, I usually pack every day sugar snap peas. Nice. And also cucumbers. Yeah. And also those spelt muffins. That's what I pack every day. Then sometimes I throw different meats like salmon burgers or mm -hmm. or like a, what chicken. Yeah. Bacon burgers sometimes. Yeah. Cool. What's the hardest part? Uh, the hardest part is trying to not want to eat the sweets. Yeah, it's tough. What uh, what makes it hard for you? Is it seeing your friends eating sweets or is it seeing it on TV or billboards or, or what makes it hard? Or are you just hungry? Well, sometimes I watch diners, drive-ins and dives and uh, <laughs> uh, stuff like that. So then it, it, all those bad foods for you that they claim at, are in restaurants, they just make me sort of hungry and I mm. try better than that like i sometimes eat ham and cheese and stuff like that yeah and then do you eat like sandwiches or or do you make burritos or wraps or anything like that like um you said you pack your uh your food a lot so what are you packing up well i usually pack a a lot of like m some vegetables um some maybe some raspberries in there a couple of weeks maybe some strawberries i usually just and what about meats you said you, you might put do you uh do you eat the meats on their own like uh the chicken for example where do you put it in something a thermos i put it in a thermos sometimes right on what what about bone broth have you tried any weird foods like liver or eyeballs or brains or anything like that yet no i i tried the bone broth but it it was all right. <laughs> it was a little funky, huh? Was it the beef kind? Do you remember? Uh, we got the bones from like a local um, store that, um, yeah. you know, the people that own it. So cool. we got the out of that and we made it out of that. That's awesome. Well, if, uh, yeah, beef, beef broth can be a little funky sometimes. It kind of, you saw Star Wars, right? Yeah. Kind of imagine what Yoda's kitchen would smell like. It's kind of like that, right? It's a little, it's a little swampy. <laughs> but uh, I, so I encourage that's kind of like an advanced level right there. If you want to go for it and do the beef bone broth, I highly encourage people to do that. But uh, if you just want something that's like a super satisfying, uh, delicious soup or broth, then you can use chicken or uh, or turkey. And those both come out really nice because they're not really funky. They're more like they make your whole house smell good, like an old fashioned diner or something like that. Yeah, we make bone broth sometimes, but we haven't tried turkey or chicken, but it sounds pretty good because sometimes we get some instead of yeah making it. 
Yeah, and that's one of the cool parts too because it winds up saving money because you can get like a, a whole chicken and then you can roast that up or bake it or throw it in the slow cooker or something like that make that into a recipe and then when you're done with it you take all the bones some of that leftover meat you just throw it in the slow cooker for a few hours and then you have this beautiful broth so sometimes when i'm doing like uh do you know do you remember what krav maga is the self-defense stuff kind of like karate yeah uh when i'm doing that or when i'm uh, exercising a lot going to hike a mountain or something like that bone broth is actually really cool because it's like a it's a uh, real life protein supplement. You can kind of think about it like that. Instead of having a protein powder or something like that, this is the real version where you're not just getting the protein, but also a lot of other really cool compounds that help you out uh, when you're recovering. So like Kobe Bryant, uh, he drinks a lot of bone broth, especially, and uh, a lot of people who are pro athletes, which is very exciting because it's a weird food and it takes a little bit of getting used to. But uh, that's part of the fun of it. Are there any other foods that you've tried that you didn't think you would like, but you actually do? Like uh, bison venison? I, that didn't, didn't sound like a regular food, and I tried it, and I liked it. <laughs> yeah, you liked it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, bison is really good. I grew up uh, down the road from a bison farm, and uh, it tastes, I think, a little bit less... Uh, gamey than beef even it's like a very it's it's actually quite subtle it's not too intense if you come here to texas then we have uh, a place here called the lonesome dove that allison and i just went to and they have a sausage that's made out of rabbit and rattlesnake and we had that just a couple weeks ago so you were you were the youngest to place in your in your bracket for wrestling right yes i am why do you think uh you were able to do that What's the secret well, advantage you have? I got lucky in the brackets. Like, all the <laughs> kids were spread out. so yeah. I, That comes in handy. Yeah. And also, it, it was at my natural weight instead of cutting down. So, mm -hmm. I, I had an I had advantage. Yeah. That's cool. Have, have you ever seen Vision Quest? Uh, no. It's an old movie about wrestling. It's uh, It might make you laugh, but... You might want to check that one out. It's it's pretty fun. I remember watching that, and that made me want to wrestle so bad. But we didn't have a wrestling team in New Hampshire where I was. But what about, let's see. So you also have the highest grade in your class, right? Yeah. There's a lot of competition, though. <laughs> yeah, there always is. But do you think being good at wrestling or, or spending a lot of time doing sports makes you worse at school or better at school? I think it makes you better at school because say you have a science test and, and it's about the out, out outside and what living out there, you know what's out there. Mm -hmm. So you can get a better grade at it possibly. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that doing things that seem weird and different from each other, like wrestling and math, actually when you get good at one of them, you can start to bring what you learned from that one to the other one, right? And then you can you can use that to your advantage all across life. Yeah, and also um, you you sit around all day for a test. Mm -hmm. Your body is used to that because you need rest from that. So that makes you more wanting more to rest, sit down than other people that don't go outside. They have to; they're all energetic and they just sit inside all day. Yeah. Well, what do you think it's going to look like when you're my age? When you're all old and thirty-two? <laughs> When you're all covered in wrinkles. Mm. Are you still going to be wrestling? Or are you going to be exercising every day? Are you going to be eating right? What do you think? I'm probably going to try and eat right and try and exercise. Like, I'm more of an outdoors person where I like to. Throw, we cut down trees to make our own firewood. We have to roll logs down here, down our hill, so, we, so I like to throw them down. Cool. I used to do that when I was a kid, too. We made how many? Uh, how much wood do you have? Well, we cut down some older trees, so it would probably be about maybe throw down maybe fifteen thir thir to thirty pieces of wood per time or every tree. Wow! Now, do you count that as a workout when you're rolling things around, and throwing big logs? No, they're not really big. They're just probably about that big. Okay. That big logs. Hey, so that's, they're not small. That's not too bad. 
that's not too bad. That totally counts as a workout, I think, because anytime you're picking something up with your body, you're using your balance, you're moving in weird directions, those are the ones that you need to be practicing anyway. So if you're stuck on machines, it's kind of like being stuck in a desk, you know, you're just like trapped in the in the system. But when you're out there in the woods, when you're moving around and doing adventures, your body is is very ready to do that and it rewards you and it surprises you. You can get through some tricky stuff and uh, you only break your foot sometimes. <laughs> But hopefully not for a long time. For you, have you broken any bones or have you had any injuries yet? Well, I had this one. Have you ever heard of a hip flexor? Yeah. This went, I had that two times. It was during football season and wrestling season, so that put me back two, three weeks, maybe. Yeah. So what did you do to recover from that? Well, I did stretches, and also I tried to. I ran a little just to get it back the strength back and also i had to get active more than i usually do to yeah. get it back did it bum you out when you had to take time off well during football season it did because i i can only play three plays per quarter or no per half yeah that's hard but what did you did you do anything to uh try to get out of that funk when you were injured to like get in a good frame of mind so that you were still happy and looking forward to uh getting back out on the field yeah i i was still active but i didn't put too much pressure on it uh, i went to practices ran a little around ran around the field a couple times so started slow didn't push it too much and then came back and you're back in action yeah i love it okay so what's what's the best part of of eating the wild diet way it's pro the best thing is probably you get to eat more food than eat dead following a look like you said low fat diet mm -hmm. doctors say eat less food yeah i ate more food i you you feel if you eat more it's almost like if you eat that much food you you have all your energy that you need and then do you have a hard time stopping eating or do you just kind of know when you're not hungry anymore i just know when i'm not hungry anymore yeah unless you eat the sweets right yeah then <laughs> all right what are your what are your favorite sweets i like white chocolate Ooh, white chocolate is good what else um i eat like a lot of hershey's <laughs> skittles uh-huh i probably eat one every wrestling mat match Home match we have so mm -hmm. just just to be able to get my energy up for that wrestling match i see so like how much do you eat is it before yeah around before or maybe after my first match or yeah so you just kind of need a quick burst of energy a yeah. little bit of sugar actually isn't too bad for that as long as you don't overdo it and obviously it's it's great if you get it from the highest quality that you can but if you're young and ex exercising a lot, especially in competition, you can get away with, with some treats like that. Actually, uh, when I was running marathons, jelly beans were a huge thing, and they're still a, a big thing because people are out there, they're really convenient, they're popping them in their mouths the whole time. It's not the best food, but uh, if you're going to eat jelly beans anyway, that's that's a good time to do it for sure. And uh, so how much, like how many uh, Skittles would you eat or how much of a Hershey's bar? Since it's just after... Easter, I got a, like this big choc um, white chocolate bar. So I usually my mom breaks it off into little pieces and gives me it maybe once a day. Do you and having one piece, you kind of appreciate it more, right? Yeah. Yeah, you you look forward to it. You take your time eating it. It's not like you get a whole bar. You get like this whole you know bowl of ice cream. It's like you have this one thing and you're so thankful for it and it's so good and you can't wait to have it right yeah that's something that's a lesson that you've already learned that's going to work very well for you down the road because that doesn't apply to just food but i think if you can start like you're already doing uh acting not for what you want right now but for what you really want what you want later right uh you might want to eat a whole bag of skills right now or a whole Hershey's bar but I think you want that next medal more right you want to be up there on the leaderboard you want to be dominating your opponents and, and crushing it and being a rock star of wrestling you want to be the best you can be right and you want to do what it takes 
Yeah. Yeah, and so if you do that the right way, it really pays off. Uh, I had someone on my show, Dr. Kate Shanahan, and she worked with Kobe Bryant, like I said before, an NBA player, uh, and Dwight Howard, another NBA player. And I'm going off the top of my head, but I think she said that Dwight Howard, when she started working with him, was eating 21, 22 Hershey's bars a day. And the way that that plays out over time is that he he when he was younger it kind of worked out and he was all right he, maybe he could have been a lot better but even in his mid-20s certainly late 20s he started to have like nerve problems and, and problems with his hands and inflammation he wasn't recovering because he was eating way too much sugar because that sugar is kind of like a dirty fuel right and you can have that that quick burst sometimes but like in rock, paper, scissors, you can't use fire all the time, right? You can only use it once ever in your entire life. So you kind of have to think about uh, sugar like that during your day. You get like maybe a little sugar burst, right? During your, your workout or something like that. And that can be really good for fueling your, uh, uh, your, your mind and your body when you need that, that quick hit. As long as you don't abuse it, you know, as long as you're not a slave to the Skittles, as long as you're not, you know, thinking about Skittles and Hershey's bars all day, right? Right. I, when I wrestle, I like sometimes, oh, maybe I could have a bag of Skittles, but then I, once I eat that, oh, this next match is coming up. We should worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, you might feel good for a little while if you eat that bag of Skittles, but you know what a sugar crash feels like, right? Yeah. What does it feel like? Once you eat sugar, you want more and then more. <laughs> yeah. It's a roller coaster. And then you get, I, I know I get cranky. Do you get cranky afterwards when you have that when, crash? Yeah. <laughs> hangry is what we call it. When you're hungry and angry at the same time and all you need is something, something to eat right now. And usually you pick the worst option, <laughs> which is bad. So it's a great idea for you to, pack your lunch like you've been doing for a while and i know your parents are awesome too they're they're a great help and super supportive and uh i'm really thankful that you took the time jack to come on the show and share all of your knowledge and expertise with everyone else because there's a lot to learn from you yeah. it's true you better believe it you're way ahead of your time jack yeah <laughs> so what are you looking forward to in the next few years what, what are you after more medals Mm, yeah, next year, uh, I'm hoping that I get another state medal, like one of the top ones, like first. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, awesome. Well, like I said in your book, I know you can do it, and you're going to do it even bigger the next time, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So you better keep in touch, all right? All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for coming on, Jack. But thank you. Before you go, don't forget to grab your listener discount on our 30-day fat loss plan. In this plan, we share 30 days of mouth-watering wild diet meal plans that are designed to help you drop fat with real food. The meal plans are paleo-friendly, easy to make, and literally the meals that my wife Allison and I eat just about every day and night to stay lean, fit, and happy. In the program, you'll get the most effective method of meal and nutrient timing to best stimulate fat loss and muscle recovery, the truth about how much protein you really need for your body type, 30 days of specific healthy fat-burning meal plans as a done-for-you nutrition strategy, and tons more. If you check it out today, you'll even get a listener discount. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com forward slash 30 days. That's the number 30, D-A-Y-S. Once again, that's fatburningman.com forward slash 30 days. I'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you. And if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan and Facebook by typing in Abel James or Fat Burning Man. Drop me a line 
anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. I'll give you a second to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes in video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man. Better yet, enter your best email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week.